Today let's talk about brakes. Brake pads. These got a little life left in them. But uh, getting down there and since this is uh, one of our racing machines, we want to make sure we got good pads in there. Yeah, those are pretty much junk, actually. You shouldn't run them any lower than that. Everybody does. You'll run them until you run it on steel, but whatever. Just want to talk about replacing brake pads, um, bleeding brakes, and we're actually going to put all new fluid into this one. Brake fluid's pretty nasty. Basically, don't get it on any paint you like because it'll uh, peel it right off it. Um, I make one of these for, I guess, for bleeding brakes. Um, I'm going to use it too for swapping these out to help catch some of the mess. It's not the greatest tool in the world, but it definitely helps. Uh, it's just a plastic bottle with a hole drilled through the cap with the hose on it. And how I use it for bleeding brakes is I'll crack my valve open. Um, usually I'll get a, a wrench up underneath that. Um, especially for when we're ble bleeding so that you can work the air out of it. We'll go over that in a minute. But I like having this on there because it helps just catch some of the mess. This isn't the greatest piece of tubing, but must have been what I had laying around that day. I'd like to get something a little smaller, just easier to work with. Um, maybe I'll find something laying around here quick. But otherwise, most uh, most cats, I believe, run uh, the, the same Willwood caliper, or at least similar Willwood caliper um, uh, for a lot of years. I mean, was, I've seen them look pretty much the same on sleds as early as 94 and I don't know how late they go but I know you go 10 years there with pretty much the same same caliper it's a Willwood caliper I'm gonna swap fluid out for Willwood's 600 plus um, racing brake fluid um, but replacing the pads is pretty simple you just got the one one uh, pin there holding the pads in place. Pull the pin out and if you're lucky, your pad will just slide up and out. I'm not lucky today. Um, brakes will have residual pressure and they will, if you were to look at these pads, I got, I got more pad left on the front than I do on the back. Um, it's just how they wear so that will kind of stick in there but yeah you just pull the pin back pull the pad up out through the top like I said they're not completely shot but we're getting down <laughs> the the compound on the back side starting to break off these are shot I, I wouldn't run these any longer um, not even on a trail machine if especially if I had new stuff sitting there it's like I said most people are run them to death and and then wonder why you know calipers go bad because the seals go out of them because the pistons run out and you can see even these pistons got some dirt on them and whatever I'm gonna push them back in and we're gonna run with it but uh, yeah check your pads once in a while make sure you got good stopping power doesn't mean you can go like hell when you can't stop. Just makes you look dumb. So So a step that would have made pulling them out a little bit easier, uh, but I skipped it because I don't want them to drop down behind the chain case. Would have been open the the bleeder valve. Like I said, that, that'll take the pressure off the pistons and off the pads, but uh, you also run the risk of when you pull the pull the pin out, them just dropping straight down. And 
I didn't want to deal with that. So I'll go through the little extra effort to pull them up through the top. They make these handy brake spreaders. Um, yeah, this one's kind of a cheapo. I don't know, Amazon special. I'm sure it was only a few bucks. Don't remember exactly where I got it. It works. Okay. It's kind of sloppy, but um, main thing is, is you got to get those pistons pushed back in in order to get the new pads in. This is kind of the biggest pain in the ass part. Especially if you don't have the right tools for the job. You don't want to get the get the pistons cocked and in, into place because then then you're not fighting fluid pressure, you're just fighting um metal to metal contact. It's it's a wedge. Um but this kind of helps. You just drop that down in there and you you open it up. It's it's supposed to stay pretty straight. It doesn't always stay the straightest and you end up a little bit cocked in there but make it work um, before I do any of that though need a quarter inch wrench for my bleeder I'm gonna just toss that on there I'm actually not gonna use the box down because I'm just gonna open this up and then leave it open with the tube on there. I think I got it. Um, try to tuck my bottle down out of my way. I guess that's not going to be super possible. Trying to do this with everything in place may not work the best or be the cleanest, but didn't want to tear everything apart. Try to avoid tearing everything apart as much as possible, even though at the end of the day, a lot of times it saves a guy more time than it costs him. Yeah, you slide that spreader right in there. Just start opening it up. Pushes on the pistons. I'm already pushing kind of hard. As I look down at it, I guess I'm getting a little crooked already, which... Awesome. I kind of wondered if this wasn't going to be a little bit of a fight. It's better if you don't run your pads so darn long because uh, then you don't got to try to back your pistons back into the caliper as far. But no matter, we'll work with what we got here. Might have to grab the bars and do a little encouraging. Just don't get crazy with it. Take your time and be patient. It saves you time and headache in the long run. Because if you start pushing on shit and break it, then what? Well, then you got to call me and see if I got parts you can buy from me. So go ahead, do what you need to. Binding up pretty hard on these. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take the uh, the line coming from the master cylinder off, drain that out so that it doesn't drip everywhere, and hang it up. And then uh, with everything opened up, start pushing some more. I'm getting I'm getting some movement. I got them got them moving in. It's just like I say, you gotta still taste. Take your time. Um, so you don't mess your seals up and, and or bend or break something you didn't intend to. When you're messing with your brake lines, do yourself and anybody behind you a favor and try to get line wrenches. Every time Dick and Harry puts a crescent wrench or an adjustable wrench on that stuff and starts cranking and you know that's all fine and good but then anybody and everybody who has to go and work on it after you looks at it and it's all stripped out and rounded off and you know brakes aren't the most fun to work on anyway 
Especially when they're not, when they're always corroded and dirty and haven't been touched in 25 years. And other than the one guy that uh, threw his crescent wrench or his, his uh, vice grips on it and chewed it all to hell. So, I don't know, just a thought. And it's the right tool for the job. As I mentioned, we're going to clear all this fluid out and completely change it. Um, pretty sure I just got some standard DOT4 in there right now. Which DOT4 is good stuff, don't get me wrong. But uh, we're, we're going to be running some 600 plus in there. Making sure we don't lose our brakes. So I unhook the master cylinder just so I don't have to tip the sled over I guess. No, uh, want to dump the rest of the fluid out of the master instead of trying to pump it all through the system. Plus on the bottom of the master there's a bunch of crevices where shit sits. So, And you don't want to mix brake fluid types. So gonna get it all cleaned out as good as I can you can see there's some black shit in there that we'll try to get cleaned out too a little bit before we're uh, completely done here clean fluids good fluid clean that out I'll just use a little brake clean shouldn't uh, shouldn't hurt anything Give it a quick wipe down and then I'm going to bolt it back to the handlebar. We'll leave it empty yet for a minute while we finish spreading the pistons and the caliper for changing the pads. things the hard way in a way that takes 10 times as long as it has to around here so got the pistons slid out far enough that I can get my my new pads in there um, when it comes to placing new new pads just do one at a time start your clip through the front side or the outside of the caliper Slide your pad down and just catch it with that pin like that. Then slide your back pad in, run your pin across and catch that one. Get your glove out of the way. Just like that new pads so we still got some work ahead of us um, gotta get new fluid in bleed out the rest of the the old fluid out of the caliper and then bleed the brakes back so that we got some pressure and got all the air out of it the whole point in running the high temp pads and the high temp fluid is so that we don't boil the fluid and lose our brakes if you got an air pocket in your in your uh, system you'll still lose your brakes go ahead and hook the master cylinder line back up to the caliper we'll grab our line wrench 7 sixteenths is what size this particular fitting is we'll, we'll use our line wrench to hook the brake cable back up
but I'm going to leave the, the bleeder open. I'm going to just tighten it down to where it's nearly stopped. Open it back up, quarter or half turn. Then we're going to fill our cylinder up, or our master cylinder, with some good stuff. Six hundred plus. It's what we've been using, um, or what I've been using this year, and had good luck with it. Haven't boiled brakes yet. Knock on wood. I'm gonna fill that reservoir up. For now, I'm gonna just give it some pumps. I'm going to use my thumb a little bit to cover the hole. So what I'm doing is I'll pull the brake lever back. Since there's nothing in the system or not a lot in the system, there's a lot of air in there. So I'm pushing an air bubble up inside the reservoir. I'm pushing air out of the bleeder. But rather than opening and closing the bleeder with a wrench, right now I'm just covering the end as I let it back out with my thumb when I let the uh, let the lever back that then kinda it creates a suction basically so that we're starting to fill the line we'll just do that really gonna do that until what I just got right there was a pretty good stream if you saw that a good stream coming up out of the bleeder so that means we got fluid down into the caliper um, doesn't mean we got all the air out but means we got a pretty good pretty good supply in there um, since like I mentioned I know we still got some fluid in there I'm gonna leave that open pop this on there and put a few pumps through this keep an eye on your reservoir because you don't want to let it run all the way empty as you're putting fluid in because if you let it run empty you're just pushing more air into the system so we'll fill that back up we're to the point where I think we can do some bleeding so you take your quarter inch box in that's what size that bleeder is I'm gonna with the valve shut I'm gonna open it a crack as I depress the lever shut the valve let the lever back out open push close release open push close release that makes sure you're not sucking air back through the bleeder into the caliper. So we're going to work all the air through and out the system, clean the rest of the fluid out of that caliper, the stuff I'm getting to come out. Still looks kind of dirty, but it could just be my bleeder's a little dirty. But you're going to do that until you feel a pretty good... Um, pretty good resistance on the on the lever so this I'll open pull close release and then I'll give it just a couple of pumps with the bleeder still closed I can see the pistons contacting um, I'm not able to pull my lever all the way to the bar um, so I'm starting to get get pressure in there which is good you want to make sure you bleed it out so you're good and tight um, just to make sure you got everything set right so now what I'm actually doing is I'll pull the lever open till the lever pulls all the way to the bar and I'll stop close the valve now I'll release 
So that's pull, open, close, release. But I'm doing it as fast as that lever is coming back and hitting the bar so that I'm sure I'm not pulling, pulling air in there. I'm going to do that just a couple more times, giving it a couple taps. I'm liking how that's starting to feel. Checking my level. I'm up towards my max level. I overfilled it on purpose. I'm just kind of bleeding it back to the, the proper fill level. I'm pretty happy with, with how that feels. My pads are getting a good squeeze. I'm probably going to make sure my bleeder's shut and leave it at that. So that there is how to bleed the brakes. That's it. Change pads, bleed brakes, change fluid. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Or even if you don't and you want to hate on every video, that's fine because it just means you're watching. So... Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Don't matter to me. Either way, it's a view. Um, I'm just trying to help. So uh, if you see something I'm doing wrong, feel free to let me know a better method. want to give everybody the best info there, that I can. Um, if you got questions or got stuff you want to see, find Longton Motorsports on Facebook. Reach out to me that way.